All right, first portfolio comes from Jorge Mendo de Zavadev. Sorry, man. Okay, so I did see this one before. However, I'm revisiting this. And first reaction is curious about the dog up front, but maybe that's part of branding. The colors uh, and the contrast, nice. I like how that matches out with the buttons below. There's a clear call to action in the front, which is check out my projects. And I assume I click that and I'm gonna scroll down. I also like the scroll bar with the same yellow. So we just have black, white, and an accent color. And honestly, I'm such a big fan of this style to uh, colors in general. Um, even when it comes to clothing and furniture and whatnot, just having your neutrals uh, and then an accent, black, white, gray and then your favorite color yellow okay this looks great so ooh, that button pop out that's really nice too i see in the bottom left there's a an anchor link that's a good sign too fluid scroll really nice gifts embedded solid this showcase is just like such a nice way to just understand a project compared to trying to send someone to their your GitHub and having a shitty readme. Like no one's doing this, but just in one screen, I see two projects and they both look, um, you know, acceptably styled and intuitive, just like this app. So already he's killing it. I scroll down, there's more projects. Even this tile layout like is so much better than a pinned repo on GitHub. It doesn't even have to be crazy. I don't even have to go to GitHub to check it out. Like I, I feel like I got the information. He's got nine projects. And then we have a let's collaborate at the bottom. My inbox is always open. Uh, socials at the bottom, that's great. So we got Twitter and LinkedIn, even with the accent hover. And now we got the dog at the bottom, which I'm guessing connects to the top. And it goes to lap of love. So I'm guessing is this like a donation? Oh, this is for Blaze. I'm guessing that's Jorge's dog. Yep, Jorge. Man, he's pulling on my heartstrings right now. Damn, Blaze. D okay, I don't think, I think he was just genuinely doing this. Like I think he likes dogs and cares for Blaze, um, but this makes him that much more likable to me. Like he's, who doesn't like their dog? That's sweet that he's kind of built that into just branding. Uh, overall, love this. Simple, straight to the point, writing in the projects, ads and color, boom, 10 out of 10. Love this. I'm happy we started out on a good one. Okay, this is another readme with a bunch of developer portfolios. I'm guessing you can just submit yours. We'll go with Thea. Let's see what Thea's got. Hello there, I'm a software developer, four years of experience, Cambodia. I, I don't know if I would mention Cambodia, like unless that's a unique thing for you. I don't know. I guess so. If you're going to have Cambodian, yeah, okay, Cambodia geography. I guess that makes sense that people might be wondering why is it all Cambodian stuff. I really like recommendations. So we got recommend or quote carousel. That's great. It shows proof more than your projects would, more than a resume would. The source is there too. So he does, he's done some freelancing. The fact that one of them is from a CTO is really nice. So this is a good start too. Oh, I like these career journeys. Man, I picked some good ones. Like I've been looking at some not so good ones recently. So off camera, but this one, I like the career journey, a tech lead. Okay, so this is the same company from the CTO. That's good to see. Blogs, uh, let's see. Social, so we got LinkedIn. I'm gonna check out his LinkedIn, let's see. Okay, man on stage with a mic authority in charge someone trusted him with the attention of everyone at this conference or in this room that's that's really good okay we got some things in the gallery and he okay he's still at book me plus yeah this is another good one like no red flags i'm seeing signs that he's doing things outside of work with the presenting i'm seeing he's active on social and being professional he's he looks like he can present himself well man that's great I'm happy with this. And it didn't go overboard. Uh, again, it made it easy for me. Oh, what's GitHub stats? Oh, okay. Love this. He embedded some kind of GitHub stats here. A plus. I don't know how that happens, but it's got to be good. And then the important graph. For me, the graph is so important. And I'm seeing green everywhere. So this is amazing. This is really cool. Man, be like these guys. I'm... I'm so proud. I'm so happy. I'm, in, I'm getting fired up, man. I want to just make some cool stuff now. Uh, but I did find some other links to 
to counterbalance, I guess, the, the sentiment here, which is don't just dive in and think that having a portfolio like these guys is going to fix everything for you. This is an interesting post from uh, LinkedIn with regards to UX, UX portfolio reviews. And I know we're mostly a lot of developers here, but he brings up a lot of the similar criticisms that uh, people in the web dev community have with portfolios. Okay, let's summarize this. It's a legacy concept. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, it's too one size fits all, whereas in the real world for UX, some people want uh, really lo-fi design. Some people want clickable Figma interactive prototype. Some people just want wireframes and mockups. Uh, so it doesn't really show you how it is to work with someone, even though they might have like a banger portfolio. Also in the comments, uh, a lot of people are saying like, yeah, and people are just stealing things. Like you can, you can just find someone's really good portfolio, clone it, copy it, put your name on it, and no one's going to really find out. I see that a lot with landing pages and developer sites and animation especially like there's always with web dev that hero section with the like kaleidoscope lines with the dots that kind of move around with your mouse it looks sick but these people aren't making it themselves and and that's okay like that's kind of the point of building things is you're stealing things from people all the time and that's accepted here's another one this one's more for us for web devs he says don't waste your time on a react portfolio website and there's some stats here 60 hiring managers say that a portfolio website turns out won't get you a job. So 300 plus recruiters and they say nine, most of them, 93% would look at a candidate's website and you would think that and be like, oh, okay, I should make one then. However, 85% of the time, the impact of that website was very small at most in terms of making a hiring decision. So yeah, they'll glance at it, but it's not going to get you hired. In fact, a lot of times if it's not like a standout, it might just disqualify you. So it's like it, it could just be a total liability if you're putting a lot of your stock in how marketable, hireable you are into this. Most of them don't care. Yep, they look at your website, but they don't give a crap. I am going to talk about how this happens. Like, I feel like when you're going through school, when you're going through boot camp, when you're looking for that first job, it's like, of course it's going to matter. How can it not matter? I'm going to walk you through exactly how that happens. But let me look at this. Okay, reason two, it might actually hurt your chances. I was just saying that. I didn't even know he wrote this. I was just saying it. It gives you so much surface area for someone to be critical about you. Like if you're going for a front end role and your style's not on point, your typography's not on point, maybe the alignment's a little off or it looks good on a web but not on mobile. Um, those are just all reasons that where they might disqualify you. If people are looking to disqualify you, you're just giving them more ammo to do that. It's almost like if you're on a first date and you're blabbing a lot, you're just yapping. You're yapping nonstop. Like every everything is a is a potential opportunity for someone to be like, yeah, red flag, I don't like that. This one, okay, one more from an external source. So the average software engineer cold application uh, has a roughly 2.5% chance of advancing to the first stage, which is the interview or the screening. That's because filtering candidates is now expensive. So 2.5% of applicants make it to the first screening. And it's very important for the people making those decisions to have like a quick way to, to make that decision. Okay, so this is saying basically the hardest part is getting to that first screening. So that first phone call, first technical interview, whatever it is, the first contact with the real human at the company, because it looks like, mm, what, 90, 97.5% of applicants don't even make it there. However, if you do make it there, there's a 66% chance that you'll make it to the last stage. So the, you get in the door, they are probably going to like you unless you mess up in a big way and you're probably going to move on. The hardest part is getting in the door. So it's very important to make sure you're doing that as well as you can. You're not going to shoot yourself in the foot and just prevent you from getting in the door in the first place. Now, the broader job search landscape shows that candidates typically need to submit 100 to 200 plus applications to get a single job offer with each application yielding an 8.3 chance of landing an interview. All in all, that means the jury typically requires 10 to 20 applications to secure an interview and 10 to 15 interviews to receive an offer. These are the takeaways I want to show you. This is going to provide you an inside look at what it's like to make the hiring decision or to decide whether one applicant gets into the front door 
or they don't. Okay, so this is your your front end senior engineer now. You got in for your first job, your second job, your third job. You're probably on now, and now you're leading the team, which means all as well. And now your hiring manager is coming to you and saying, "Hey, I have all of these applicants, and we got to hire one to two people like next week or in the next two weeks. Like, help us find the good people, so that they're just gonna dump a bunch of resumes and stuff at you. All the while, you got production bugs going on. Uh, you got features that are late. You got your own junior developers on the team who are asking you for questions or who are breaking things. Then you got project managers who all they want to do is." book meetings with you and talk about KPIs and OKRs and blah, 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 CAC and churn and whatever else. You got all these people coming to you now and you have your own work that you're supposed to do when you're in deep work or you're in flow. Then you have chat messages coming in. Then you have an all company hands on me, whatever. There's a lot going on. And now you got a spreadsheet of potential candidates who have gone through the first couple rounds of recruiters. So they went through their contracting companies internal recruiters then they sent them over to your big company's um, HR department who had their screens and their AI screens in between there already so these people are on paper legit and can do what you need to do on your team so you have this spreadsheet you open it up amidst all the chaos of the day and you see uh, there's 45 candidates here I changed their names for um, Charles Dickens characters for fun uh, but you're like holy cow and I simplified this but each of their names would have like a link to their resume and in their resume they got right their LinkedIn their github and then their portfolio site and you have like an hour max to bring out maybe the top three people here that you want to interview. So let's do that math. You have an hour before your next meeting or your next thing you have to get to. And then maybe you want a little buffer between there to clear your head. So let's say 45 minutes, 45 candidates, one minute a candidate. At this point, you're not looking to understand their life story. You're not looking to understand where did they grow up? What do we have in common? Instead, you're looking for reasons to disqualify them. So you can move on to the next person, so you can move on to the next person, so you can get done, so you couldn't answer your hiring manager Slack messages, so you could answer your boss's messages, so you could fix things in production, then you can fix what actual, actual feature you're working on and just get back to your life. And already, just like saying this, I'm getting stressed out. Um, so, man, then say you're Bob, and there's three other people on the team who also make the call so there's not as much bias about just what you think you all say yes or no and then that's just to move on to the first interview then you do all this again for the second interview and then it turns out oh those first five people you thought were good well they're not actually good so now i have to revisit these resumes and what i'm trying to just get at is if you put yourself in the shoes of the people who are just living their lives and trying to do their best for their company. Uh, I think you'll see why it's so brutal out there and why just the smallest thing, the smallest typo, the page is loading just a little too long. Your LinkedIn has something slightly weird in it or your portfolio site just doesn't mm, feel right or stand out. It's like, that's all they need. That's all they need. So that's all I want to show there. These are the takeaways I want to give you. Let's connect the dots here. The reason you got rejected is more logistical than you think. That's what I was showing just there. If your contact info is all right, if you don't have a LinkedIn, if you don't have everything in order and 40 of those other 45 people do, just by process of elimination, you're not going to get moved on. Sorry. Second takeaway, your portfolio is the seventh most important part of your application behind a recommendation from a human, a LinkedIn, a GitHub, a resume, a cover letter, communication history. So this isn't like a formal requirement normally, but even before you get to the interview, you've had some interviews back or emails back and forth, some phone calls, and people are taking notes on that and taking that into account. Did you speak clearly? Were you fumbling all over your words? Could you get your point across? Were you polite and respectful, professional? That's a factor still. And then your portfolio. And one of the reasons why it's so low is because it's so easy to just clone a different portfolio, put your name on it. And because everyone only has a minute to assess you, they're not going to go in and try to find out if you actually did this. So even if it's perfect, 
Did you actually do that? Could you actually do that from scratch again? It's hard to say. I would say if you're good at coding, you like you're good enough to be hired for a junior role, I would encourage you to make an actual app, like make a real app. And you could even do it in a way where it's a lot easier to than starting from scratch. Like instead of writing the first lines of your code, you could create a marketplace app. So a Slack app, a Salesforce app, a Discord bot, a WhatsApp app. They all have like templates and rules and just guardrails that help you get going sooner. I think that's a good alternative for a first or second project as aside from having a full-on portfolio. It's also more interesting to talk about. It seems more professional when you're in an interview. It's just cooler to say, yeah, I made a Slack bot and 20 organizations are using it and I made, you know, 200 bucks a month from it. And I learned a lot from how to do deployments to how to do QA and blah, blah, blah. Like that's a lot more real than just saying, I made a portfolio site with like cool animations. It's kind of like, yeah, that's cool. But what are you going to do for me at this company? So there we go. Three portfolios, two portfolios, a couple takeaways on the utility of this. I hope that's helpful. If you want another similar video, I looked at a couple really banger portfolios over here and gave you three more similar takeaways that'll help you land your job and build your own cool digital garden. Click that. I'll see you over there. Thank you. Bye.